Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Ezra. Now, Ezra needs a little explanation, perhaps, for some. Ezra was one of the post-exilic, you might call him a prophet, you might call him a scribe, an historian. His, uh, prof or his writing here, the book that we call Ezra, is largely an historical, a part of the historical section of the Old Testament. But Ezra was the one who was the priest who led the people back from the captivity in Babylon, which later became in Persia, and back into the land of Palestine. So just a very, very brief history. Israel was taken into captivity in Babylon, but the Babylonians were conquered by the Persians. And so it was the decree of a Persian king that sent the people of Judah back to Jerusalem. And Ezra is the one leading them in that particular way. So as Ezra goes back there, one of the first things that they, that they see is that the temple is destroyed. Here is that magnificent temple that Solomon had built that had been the center of their worship for all of these generations. And now it was completely decimated. And that was a very discouraging thing. So before they were able to reestablish and rebuild that temple, which, by the way, as you read through some of these kinds of prophets, never attained to the beauty and the grandeur of the one that Solomon built. Nonetheless, as they tried to rebuild that, they needed to first establish that rhythm of worship. And so that's what Ezra does. Here in chapter 3, uh, in verse 4 specifically, listen to what it says. And they kept the Feast of Booths. Now the Feast of Booths happens in the seventh month of the Jewish calendar, and so you'll see that in this passage. They kept the Feast of Booths as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the rule as each day required. And so they went back to the law of Moses and saw what Moses had prescribed to, for them to do during that festival, that Feast of Booths, as they called it. And as they followed that, even though the temple wasn't built at that time, they reestablished that rhythm of worship. That's something that's very, very important. The Jews were, to, were supposed to, when they were in the land, come down to Jerusalem and worship three times a year. Those were the normal feast days and the normal festivals. And so as these people come back into the land of Palestine, into their homeland to be sure, they reestablish that festival um, rhythm that they're supposed to do. And so they, they, I, I find it interesting that in this verse, twice it makes reference to the fact that they looked into the scripture to find out what they were supposed to do. They did as it was written, and then according to the rule. At least that's how the English Standard Version uh, interprets those. Now, the important thing here is that they were going back to what God had already declared and decreed. And that's, and that's really the, uh, the thing that many of us need to do as well. We need to go back and make sure that we're following and listening carefully to what God has already revealed. And that's what our, what our cause is. That's what our calling is. And, and so that's what these people did at that particular time. Now, please understand that they did this without the benefit of the temple itself. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. They didn't have the temple, but that didn't inhibit their worship. Worship is not something that happens because we have all of the trappings around us. It isn't a place that we go. It is an attitude of the heart. And that's what they understood at that particular time. Would it have been... Uh, more joyful if they had been in that uh, wonderful temple that Solomon had built or even the temple that they rebuilt. Of course, but that didn't inhibit the fact that they were worshiping. And this is the point. Our worship is not based on externals. 
Yes, Christ died for our sins and he delivered us and he gave us of his, uh, of his righteousness and that's our trust. But it isn't wrapped up in all of the externals of a church building or a, a, a sanctuary or an altar or stained glass or any of those things. The worship of God is something that is of the heart. And that's what Moses had established, and that's what the people found themselves getting back into. And uh, as they resettled in the, in the city of Jerusalem and in the region of Judea, they reestablished their worship and that rhythm of worship, just as we need to do. Father, we thank you that you are the one that has established our worship that way. You're the one that has told us what we need to be doing and how we need to do that. And I pray that we will give our attention to your word and to your truth, not just to the superficial of your word, but rather to the intent. Help us to think about it carefully, to meditate on it so that we have your mind. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.